We know how to relate the basic quantities that can be used to describe the motion of an object, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. These equations apply no matter what kind of motion is taking place. However, certain types of motion are very common, and they are worthwhile to explore in a little more detail. So let's talk about two of these, motion involving constant velocity and constant acceleration. Motion involving an object traveling at a constant velocity is pretty common. Airplanes traveling in a straight line, cars traveling down the highway, you can even approximate the horizontal motion of a baseball as it travels through the air as a constant velocity motion. For any object that has a constant velocity, its acceleration must be zero. For such an object, since the velocity isn't changing, then the object's position must be changing at a constant rate. Think about an airplane traveling at a fixed velocity, say 300 meters per second to the west. For every second that passes, the airplane must travel exactly 300 meters west. It doesn't matter when we look at the plane, it will always change position by 300 meters to the west if we look for exactly one second. Let's allow our objects to move slightly more complexly and talk about motion with a constant acceleration. This type of motion is also very common and can be used to approximate the behavior of lots of different systems of objects, such as objects that are in free fall or cars that are speeding up or slowing down. Since we know that acceleration is constant, what can we say about the object's velocity? Well, since acceleration is the derivative of the velocity with respect to time, then the velocity must be changing at a constant rate. Let's say that we are in an airplane that is traveling with a velocity of 300 meters per second to the west, but starts accelerating at a constant 1 meter per second squared east. Since the acceleration vector is in the opposite direction to the velocity vector, then we know that the airplane is going to slow down. And since its acceleration is constant, we know for every one second that passes, the airplane's velocity will decrease by one meter per second. Remember how our basic equations that describe motion require that you know the functional form of either the displacement, velocity, or acceleration as it depends on time to determine the other two quantities? Well, if we know that our acceleration is constant, then we already know the functional form of the acceleration. It doesn't depend on time. So that means that we can figure out the functional form of the velocity and the displacement, and that it will apply to any object that is undergoing a constant acceleration. It doesn't matter what the object is, a ball, a plane, a skydiver, a submarine. If they have a constant acceleration, then we can simply write down a function that describes their position, velocity, and acceleration as a function of time. To figure out the velocity, we simply need to take the antiderivative, or integral, of the acceleration. And once we know the velocity function, we take the integral to get the position. So let's do it. Remember, the acceleration doesn't depend on time, it's just a constant, so if I integrate it, I get the acceleration times time plus an integration constant. Well, the constant has to have the units of velocity to be consistent, so we can call it v naught or the initial velocity. So if I know the object's initial velocity and the acceleration, then I can determine the object's velocity at any point in time. Now we can integrate again, and we get the position as a function of time. The acceleration term gives me a factor of t squared, and again, don't forget the integration constant. That has to have units of position to be consistent, so we'll call it the initial position. Just like that, we have two equations that will describe the position and velocity as a function of time for any object that has a constant acceleration. If we know the object's initial position, initial velocity, and acceleration, then we can figure out the position and velocity at any point in time, no calculus required. These two equations make up part of the system of equations that physicists call the kinematic equations. But it's really important that you understand that they only apply when the acceleration is constant. If the acceleration is changing, then all butts are off, and your only tool to solve for the motion are our original equations involving derivatives. Still, these equations are very useful given how common constant acceleration motion is. It turns out that there are two more equations we can get if we combine these two in strategic ways. These four equations together are a powerful set that can be used to solve for the position, velocity, or even the time it takes to change velocity or position for many different realistic systems. And remember, our discussion on constant velocity motion at the beginning of this video? Well, in that example, our acceleration must have been zero, and zero is a constant just like any other non-changing number. So our four equations can be used to solve for the super special case of constant velocity motion as well.